Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the midst of a major banking crisis. Don't let all of the politicians and the people at the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England and everywhere else fool you right now because you could end up losing more than just your money. So let's just have a look at what has happened. We've got a ton of notes, so we're not going to delay today. We're going to get straight into this. Um, we're going to go back and look at what's happened over the last week with these three banks that have collapsed. I'll also touch upon what I said last week as well with my predictions for more banks. And we're seeing some pretty bad things here. In fact, we won't just talk about those. Let me just mention one other thing. So this really began a lot earlier than last week. It began a long time ago. We had the FTX collapse. We've had Silvergate last week, SVB, which is Silicon Valley Bank. That is huge because that is where all of the tech, which is this big growth industry, a lot of these tech companies keep their money there. So this is why we also had, well, we had Signature Bank as well collapse last week. And this is why you've seen the Federal Reserve rush in. And even Biden has got involved and put out a statement. Rishi Sunak from the UK has put out a statement. All these leaders and politicians around the world are starting to put out statements and saying how strong the banking sector is and, and everything else. Um, whenever you see things like this happen, you've got to remember back to my previous videos and forecasts like the 08 stuff, 2008, uh, the Great Depression Diaries, 2000, where I said as soon as these people come out, and again, they're the top figures, and say, everything's fine, we've got it contained, there's no risk whatsoever, yeah, do you remember what happened during the Great Depression Diaries? Even the, the bank manager was told, tell everyone everything's fine, come back on Monday morning, uh, everything's fine. And then the next day, on the Friday, they have a bank holiday and the banks collapse. So you've got to be really careful and don't just listen to what these politicians and other people are saying at the moment, because I'm going to get into this and show you why what they have done is actually, they've made it even worse. They put the nail in the coffin by their actions to pretty much protect all the deposits no matter what. Uh, so we'll get into that in a moment. But this is the biggest bank run now since 2008 global collapse. And that was the biggest one apart from the Great Depression. So this is pretty serious what is happening. There will be contagion. We've seen massive losses across all the banking stocks, which is what I talked about with Friday's video and where there could be massive risk there. So we saw as well First Republic, which was the second company I gave you a warning on, they lost as much as 70% from their stock price on Friday alone. Now, I'm recording this early on, so I don't know what's happening in the markets today. They haven't yet opened, but I would expect you're probably going to see big gains because we've seen a lot of losses since last week. You're probably going to start to see some big gains this week back in the banking sector because all of this has been a psychological exercise. What's happening, all of these big players are saying, we're supporting the banks, we're going to, you know, give loads of financial support, there's no risk, we're going to cover everyone, we're bailing everyone out. But then you have Janet Yellen coming on and saying the opposite in an interview on Sunday. In fact, I've got her comments here. Uh, in fact, let me play the video for you. But she basically said that they are A, monitoring a few banks at the moment. What does that mean? I think it was a mistake her saying that because that means there's more banks that are probably going to go into a crisis. But here was the main thing that she said, which counteracted some of the other comments. Well, let me be clear that during the financial crisis, there were um, investors um, and owners of systemic large banks that were bailed out. The reforms that have been put in place means that we're not going to do that again. So firstly, what does that mean then? Well, that means bail-in law. We've talked about this a lot. And it is going to take a massive event for bail-in to kick in. It will. I'm not saying that this is going to happen if a few more banks collapse, because it won't. Bail-in will happen at the worst possible time. So when they've run through all the FDIC money, which is, remember, only 1.3% of all deposits, once they've run through that, and the last week with these banks going down, yes, it was massive, it could have been catastrophic, but they rushed in to sort of shore up the banks. But you think that was, what, 0.1% maybe of, of the money here? 
So they've got 1.3%. So they've still got a lot of liquidity, which is what the banks pay into the FDIC program. So you've still got a lot of liquidity there, but it isn't going to be enough if you see a lot more banks collapse. That's why Biden made his statement. That's why Sunak made his statement and Yellen and everyone else is making their statements. Because remember, bank runs are a negative spiral. It is a psychological exercise. You have a bank run, which leads to more people seeing it, which means more bank runs. I know for a fact that there are bank runs going on right now at banks all around Europe, the UK, USA, and Canada. Actually, you are at Australia, New Zealand, and a couple of other countries as well. But the media will not put this out. And, that's, and in a way, that's kind of a good thing. So usually I'm very critical of how the media do these things. But if they did put it out today, you would see even more bank runs. If they put it out there like they did with Northern Rock, if you remember when that happened, what it did, the people didn't even know there was a bank run going on. So they actually then went out and they did a bank run themselves and it just almost collapsed the entire banking industry. That is why I'm saying to you, and I've been saying it for, what, two years now, don't trust all your money in the banks. Spread your money around, get your insurance program, but also have your hard assets and, and everything else but even that isn't going to save you. It's just going to protect you to some regard. But this is spreading, you see. This contagion is spreading. So what else have we had? We've had British and European banks that have been affected over the weekend. And that's funny or ironic because we were told there is absolutely no connection between the British and European banks over here and the US banks over there. Of course there is. I mean, it doesn't even take much research to know that some of these banks are connected. Silicon Valley Bank, this is very easy. You could do a quick Google search and find that they have a, a wing in the UK. And that's why the UK has stepped in to try and shore up that, or I'm, I'm not exactly sure what they're gonna do there, but because if that goes down, the UK tech sector could be dragged down with it as well. And then they would have to bail out and everything else. This is very, very serious. Don't believe what you're hearing, that this isn't a serious event. And remember what I talked about Silvergate? Well, their shares crashed 37%. And then of course they just absolutely toppled. And this is exactly why, because there was a run. It wasn't necessarily a, a, a physical run on the bank. It was more digital now and that is the, the transfers. And this is another reason why you're seeing transfer rates going down and down and down and down. Because if there is a big run, they don't want you to transfer you know, your entire balance out in one go. And again, where are you gonna send it to anyway? But they actually had an $8 billion run on the deposits. And because of the, the new ruling that was passed in 2020, so if you remember what was passed, the Federal Reserve said that the member banks didn't have to hold any reserves anymore. This was a huge mistake. I made a video about it at the time, and I said, this is just outrageous. It's crazy that, well, so what your reserves mean. So when you put your money into the bank and you know all the other people put their money into the bank, this then creates deposits. But what the Fed said was that the banks didn't need to hold any of those deposits. Check this if you don't believe me, because I know where this is where the comments start. Oh, this guy, he's talking nonsense or whatever. Check it for yourself, you don't believe me. The reserve ratio went to 0%. So banks didn't have to hold anything, but they could loan everything out. And this is where the problem is gonna come in and you're gonna have this systemic shock later on when people try to start using some of the, or, or withdrawing some of this uh, money. But it's gonna be very complex because it is gonna be more of a digital uh, run as opposed to a physical run. And this is why you've seen a lot of branches close as well, because it will make it a lot harder as well to get your cash out. So let's just, I'm, I'm going to tell you about some other banks today that I think are in big trouble right now. But I just wanted to recap over what Biden said, because I think this is quite key as well. So he actually said, there are important questions of how these banks got into this circumstance in the first place. We must get the full accounting of what happened and why those responsible can be held accountable and that no one is above the law. So keyword here, held accountable. Why? What exactly is going on there that they know that we don't know about? I'm guessing there was some foul play. I really tried to look into the accounts, but I found it very difficult. But I did find this record. 
So this was the SVB uh, CEO. So remember, SVB is Silicon Valley Bank. So the CEO actually withdrew or sold $3.6 million worth of stock. And this was not hours before it collapsed, not days, but it was in the two weeks below, um, before this actually collapsed. Now, Biden went on to say, Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. Your deposits are safe. Uh, I would say absolutely not. It's the complete opposite. Uh, he said, let me also assure you that we will not stop at this. We'll do whatever is needed on top of all of it. This is where you want to be worried because there is nothing that they can do on top of it. The only thing they can do is this new law that they've they've passed these, you know, this new policy to protect. I think it's twenty five billion dollars of additional protection. But where do you think that's going to come from? Where do you think the money is going to come from that they've just used to bail out these banks that have collapsed? It's obvious where the money's come from, or at least where the next round of money is going to come from. The Treasury is going to create a lot more T-bills, so Treasury bills, and then they're going to sell them to the Federal Reserve, which means they're just passing on the problem to the Fed, and they're going to sit on the Fed's balance sheet. This is going to be an absolute disaster. It's, it's a ticking time bomb. But if you look at um, the banks I mentioned last week, I'll put them on on screen again, these were the 10 I mentioned, and you look at how they're performing right now. These guys are in serious difficulty. And I'm gonna tell you about, we've got about 10 more as well that I've identified over the weekend for you, just in case any of you are holding these bank shares. Now, the other big mistake I think that SVB made was they announced that they were selling their portfolio of government bonds at $1.8 billion loss. Now, why would you ever do that unless you needed liquidity? So that's another thing you can look out for. Whenever you see warnings or um, press releases or anything or news reports of anything like that, that's when you need to get out of that stock. Not financial advice, obviously, but you need to just get out of anything where there is something as crazy as that uh, is announced. But I actually think this is just the beginning. I think if this continues the way it's going, this could be worse than 08. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be loads of buy the dip, buy the dip this week, but it doesn't solve the underlying problem that this is a crisis just waiting to happen. Look at this timeline. We had FTX collapse. Remember the Great Depression Diaries? Uh, in November 2022, we had Silvergate on March 8th, so last Wednesday. We then had SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, on Friday, March 10th. We then had Signature Bank on March 12th, on Sunday. So this is accelerating. It's not um, just a, a random event here. These banks are connected. Now it gets worse than this. We'll go on to the UK stuff in a second because the UK is uh, affected by this, whether they like that or not. But let me just mention a couple of other things here. So I mentioned, and these aren't in order of the 10 banks I mentioned on Friday to be aware of. Um, so if some of you actually sold your positions on Friday, congratulations, because you avoided some massive hits here. Uh, First Republic Bank, 84% drop. Sandy Spring, 20% drop. Customers Bank Corp, 75% drop. New York Community Bank, 30% drop. First Foundation, 45% drop. You, you see where this is going, just massive, massive drops. And remember, if you don't really understand some of this stuff and you have been hit, remember, I do have a finance course, a stock market course. This stuff is very simple once you've taken the training to actually understand how the, the macroeconomics works. I've even got it in the private community that the link is below on that where I actually gave a warning as well today. So that was put out first thing this morning in the private community. So if you're a member there, you would have got that email through. And I also talked about what I've just been doing with, with my money to reallocate it after what I've seen over the, the weekend. With a, and it's quite interesting because there's a comparison between the S&P 500 drops versus gold and versus silver. It shows you what actually happens and which one is the, the best buy. But let's look at the UK and what they said then. They, they, the, they basically came out and said that, oh, there's loads of liquidity. There's no issues at all for the UK, super strong, um, just no connection at all to the USA. But yeah, Barclays PLC took an 11% hit 
over the weekend. Hmm, doesn't sound like there's no connection. You see, there's always a connection, whether it's a physical connection or it's a psychological connection. There's always a connection with banks. We saw these reports saying, well, it's because they closed some of their branches. They just made an announcement. They're going to close a further 14 branches to make that 55 branch closures this year. That's why the stock price dropped. That's ridiculous. Of course, that wasn't the reason the Barclays uh, stock price dropped. Think about this logically. If you close 55 branches, that is 55 lots of very high rent that you're not going to have as an overhead. What about all the running costs of the branch? What about all the staff costs? What about the insurance and everything else on that branch? That means the, the, the company will become, the bank will become more profitable. Why would the stock price drop because of that? This is absolute nonsense. They are just saying anything they can think of to try and trick the, the public so that you don't realize what's going on here. But then it wasn't just Barclays, Lloyds Bank as well, huge in the UK, took a 7% hit. HSBC, Europe's largest bank, 9% drop. Santander, 14% drop. And Rishi comes out, Fishy Rishi as we call him here on the channel, saying that there wouldn't be any, you know, drops or anything like that. And then, I mean, he probably should have waited a day before he said that because the drops happened pretty much as he was as he was saying it. Kind of reminds me of the, um, that scene from, you know, where Bear Stearns CEO is saying, oh no, the stock is stronger than ever. And they're all sat there as the stock is, is crashing in the audience. But yeah, the FTSE took a 5% hit. Um, okay, it's recovered from that, but it took a 5% hit as well. We had BMP, uh, Paribas in France's largest, bank second largest in Europe. They took a 13% drop. Deutsche Bank in Germany, 13% drop. Even BAC, so Bank of America, that was a 16% drop. Credit Suisse, which I keep warning you about, they took an extra 20% hit. So they're down now 84% in the last two years. Now, I want to move on to the banks then. I think there is some massive risk. We talked about Signature Bank. Well, that's gone now. So that forecast um, has already happened. First Republic, which I warned you about, has dropped 62% since Monday. I don't know what it's done today. It's probably gone up um, because you've got all these people buying the dip. A Zions Bank Corporation is another truest key bank. Credit Suisse, obviously. We've got uh, Interest Financial Core, Western Alliance, UMB Financial Core. So all of these banks, I think you need to watch them very carefully because I think that a lot of the hedge funds are shorting them as well at the moment. So overall, my friends, this is not a good situation, but definitely don't get caught up in, in the hype of everything going on right now and don't get fooled by what they are saying, that this whole situation has now been averted and the banks have been strengthened and all this other stuff. The banks haven't been strengthened. The only way I think they're gonna get out of this crisis is if they just bring interest rates right the way back down. But it's a trap because then you're gonna push inflation way up again. And if they continue to raise interest rates, so we'll see what they do at the next meeting, then you're going to make the trap even worse again. There is no way out of this. Just continue to do what we always talk about. If you're not in the private community, please join for the sake of a few dollars a month. It's, it's crazy not to be in there because I put out posts. I show you all of my investments. I show you what I'm doing. I show you the historical examples of what is most likely to occur. Uh, I do a monthly macro video, presentations, and of course you've got the stock market course and the finance course. So you've pretty much got all the options available to you. It's just whether or not you really have the time, I, I guess, to um, allocate to taking care of this stuff. But I would say don't be like most people out there in public who just think this is all gonna go away, they don't need to do anything. Yes, some people who got called out this time were bailed out, but believe me, if this goes mainstream, there isn't enough money in the world to bail out all of these banks, which would then have a contagion effect to other banks. There's no way to stop it if you had a full-scale deleveraging.
So I'll leave it there today. We'll continue on with more great content tomorrow and throughout the week. Uh, thanks for being a subscriber here. Take care, God bless, and see you tomorrow.